welcome back or welcome to my channel my name is Ren and I make videos a couple of times a week about books and pop culture and this is going to be my final video of 2023 and it is about my Roman Empire books of this year this year the the Roman Empire thing happened like how often do men think about the Roman Empire and then the Roman Empire trend kind of appeared everyone started talking about things that were their roman empire so i thought that i would take that trend and then talk about the books that this year became my roman empire there's only two on this list one's fiction one's non-fiction because i feel like if this list was really big then it wouldn't be the same as having like the roman empire. like it wouldn't be like that one thing these two books are books that i will think about and talk about forever and that i do think about and talk about regularly. <laughs> These books had a really big effect on me um, in multiple ways and I really just want to gush about them and talk about them and they are they are my Roman Empire books. We'll start with the fiction book and that is Penance by Eliza Clark. I'd heard about this coming out so because of this coming out I read Boy Parts. Boy Parts upon a second read I enjoyed a lot more. The first read I did not know what I was reading. I had no idea what, what on earth I'd gotten myself into. But it was interesting because it got me interested in an entire kind of subsection of literature and I went to Queer Lit in Manchester not long after I'd read it and the person in there sold me books that were similar so that it's kind of made me read books that I wouldn't necessarily have chosen but I didn't like particularly love it the first time I read it but more because I just it was a shock to the system but because I had read it specifically because I wanted to read Penance and I wanted to be introduced to Eliza Clark's writing and I already had Penance on pre-order I was like right I'm gonna give Penance a go loved it the best fiction book i read this year this book is phenomenal it's set as if it's a journalist and an author and he's writing about a fictional but in the book is a true crime case and it was the death of a teenage girl and she was killed by her classmates three other teenage girls it is their accounts it is different family members accounts witness accounts diary entries blog posts all these different things telling and kind of piecing together the author as well kind of puts his own interpretation of stuff that happened as well whilst telling the story of how she died and how she was killed what's really interesting is the very first page this book is an examination of the 2016 murder of teenager Joan Wilson by three girls attending the same high school. It was written by journalist Alec Z. Corelli and first published in March of 2022. Shortly after publication, several of Corelli's interviewees publicly accused Corelli of misrepresenting and even fabricating some of the content in their interviews. Following these accusations, it was discovered that the therapeutic writing produced by two of the three offenders whilst incarcerated was illegally acquired by Corelli. The book was pulled from shelves by the original publisher in September of 2022. Now republished after the conclusion of relevant litigation, some names have been changed at the request of those involved. We believe writers, even writers of non-fiction, have a right to express themselves and tell stories in the manner that they feel best fits the story in question. It is our fundamental belief that writers have the freedom and the right to read and judge a text for themselves, that contentious works of artistic merit should not be erased from history simply for causing offence. Despite the controversy attached to this book, we have chosen to republish it in its original form the very first piece of media that we get in this is a podcast it is a podcast called i peed on your grave and it is talking about the murder and it is talking about how there are sponsorships in the podcast that are added in with no respect to what they're talking about and that there is this kind of humorous discussion surrounding what is going on from that moment i knew i was going to love this book because it is a discussion about the way true crime is in the media now. I have two degrees in psychology and a huge part of a psychology degree is criminology and the psychology behind why people commit crime and serious crime. I have had to study cases multiple times 
um, and I've had to write about them and I've had to go into the analysis and discussion about lots of them. So there are some true crime videos I watch online when it's done respectfully. 90% of true crime content online is essentially as if it's like some entertaining thing that didn't actually happen and we're just talking about it. That is a little bit terrifying when you see someone literally in the middle of being like, and then they were brutally murdered. And today's sponsor is NordVPN. <laughs> Don't do that. That is part of the reason why I loved Penance so much was the discussion it had about society today and how society consumes and discusses and approaches true crime cases. It has become so kind of like s sensationalized and it's not all true crime creators. Some true crime creators have make the videos for the right reasons to get victim stories out there that is good that's a good thing and that is what true crime should be but true crime has not become that unfortunately on mass so this is what i really loved about about this is that it has that discussion of how society is when it comes to true crime and how society consumes true crime content. It, it says sensationalise something absolutely horrific that happened. Um, another thing that is mentioned in this quite a lot is that the girls that committed the crime, one of them had a Tumblr account. Now having a Tumblr account does not mean that you are going to commit a crime. However, there is a subsection of Tumblr and the internet which is obsessed with serial killers but in like a in like a really i could have changed them way the columbine shooters they have fan pages eric, eric harrison dylan klebold is i think that's the they have fan pages on tumblr bundy has fan pages on tumblr there are some sh school shooters and some people in prison that receive fan mail and there are entire blogs dedicated to them and that is actually terrifying and I feel like it's a part of the internet that no one really sort of talks about and you can tell that Eliza Clark and me are of similar age because of it being Tumblr something that was used and something that was spoken about and you can tell that Eliza Clark has seen a lot of what goes on because the bits that involved tumblr there's a fictional school shooter in this that, that the girl idolizes but then she also does idolize eric harris and dylan klebold some of the posts just read like how some tumblr posts read and after it comes out that she's killed someone there's a post that says you know everyone's saying how awful it is on tumblr and someone responds and says oh you you're all you know you all sort of defend the you're, you say that you're a Columbiner, but then when someone actually does what they'd be proud of, you you turn on them. That is what some of it sounds like online. And it is honestly like the, the, the voice that was given to the way that social media is and the voice that was given to the way that these people act was so accurate and so well done. And it was just such a phenomenal discussion about how us as a society today consume true crime content, how we act towards true crime content and how I feel like the way that that kind of doesn't help people think that there's necessarily a consequence. By idolising people that have done such terrible things, it, it kind of results in this feeling like the thing that they did had a reason, it had a purpose, it wasn't it wasn't wrong per se that was definitely the attitude in this and it was just it was it was terrible and i think that so much of it so much of the book focused on the murderers rather than the victim which unfortunately is again a huge thing about true crime people talk about the person that committed the crime rather than the person that lost their life um in said crime honestly like it was such a phenomenal book the conversations that it raised the importance of those conversations i haven't read a book like that in so long that when i finished i kind of like every kind of point of it everything that was discussed everything that was in there kind of 
the way that it kind of hit was it felt so different and i think that it's really important like i think if you if you do watch true crime content if you if you are interested in that genuinely i think this is a really interesting book to read it's just done very well and i feel like eliza clark was opening up this this discussion um to have and kind of just says about how the internet has taken a lot of true crime things it is kind of crazy to think about the amount of like fan accounts there are for murderers <laughs> so yeah penance absolutely phenomenal genuinely one of the best books the best fiction book i read this year and it is one of the best books i've ever read like the way that eliza clark wrote it the way it was told the differences in the usage of media used and sources used and the way that even the author like literally used his own interpretation to make up what he thought would have happened in the gaps that weren't filled it's just so interesting such a good read so oh, it's genuinely phenomenal and just a very important societal discussion so yes best fiction book this year so then my second roman empire book is the non-fiction book i read this year a short history of queer women by kirsty lower and this is very short but it packs a punch now, i bought this on a whim i hadn't heard anything about it i went to my fave bookshop gaze the word as as i do regularly and it was just in in the window there was like a big display on it i think she'd been in there and um, she'd like signed them their little sign thingies and i was like oh that looks good and i'd actually finished my book um, I was going to my friend's house, still in London, but like outskirts of London. Um, and I'd finished my book on the way into central London before then going to her house out again of central London. I was like, this book's little, I'll get it. I'm staying at her house. It gives me something to read tonight. And then I can read it again tomorrow on my way back. Um, and I did actually finish it in that time. It's 208 pages long, including the sources. And I did read it all in that time. And the whole time I was at my friend's house, I literally was like, okay, I'm reading this currently. Let me read you this snippet. Let me read you this snippet. It's a friend's birthday I was going for. So everyone that was there, I was telling them about it. And then everyone that wasn't there, I was messaging like, I think you should read this. It is honestly phenomenal. It is so informative educational and hilarious in such few pages i cannot believe that she was able to include as much information as she did in such a short history like it is really a whistle stop tour of the history of queer women but it includes so much in such a good way in a way that is engaging in a way that keeps you wanting to know more and in a way that gives you a really good starting point so that you can go and do your own research like i said there's sources all in the back so if there's anything you wanted to read more those sources are there you can go and do more research on the women that are mentioned and it's just a really really good book was also an incredibly important book as a reminder that queer women have always existed and i love anything i love anything that looks back in history and tells us like you've always been there i think that it's really important now more than ever with the way that attitudes are being quite hateful to look back and realize that this has always been the case people have always been queer women have always been queer and to see how how kind of the decisions of men have impacted queer women throughout history and how terrible that is but also how queer women were able to continue to be so proud and loud about their existence despite what those men were saying honestly i loved this book i laughed i cried i made so many notes i have like did so much extra reading it was just such a good starting point and i absolutely adored it it is one of those books that i will be recommending and talking about forever um and i think about it regularly i think about the things that i learned in it i think about the stuff i took away from it and i think about all of those queer women that have been around for years and years to persevere and continued to exist and to not let anyone tell them that they couldn't exist um how their existence and their fight has ultimately led to my existence and my fight 
I loved this book. I genuinely phenomenal. So yes, these are my two Roman Empire books of 2023. I absolutely adored them. I cannot recommend them enough. Obviously both very different. They're both queer, but both both very different, but both very important, impactful, very just such so Ooh, so good i will be talking about them forever um, and i feel like if you haven't read them you should go and read them i'd love to know what your roman empire books were of 2023 i'd also like to know if you've read either of these two and if you have let's discuss it in the comments and leave your books in the comments as well like i said if you guys are new here i make videos a couple of times a week about books and pop culture so if you want to stick around and join us feel free to hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell and as usual all the links to my other social medias will be in the description as well thank you guys for watching i hope you're doing really 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 well and i will see you next time goodbye